Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my projects that I've made using this tool. It's called Draft Top, and it's not actually a crafting tool. It's made to take the entire lid off of aluminum cans. Now I should mention that this is not a sponsored video. These are just my opinions. And if you're interested in actually how to use this tool, I did an entire video on a review of it and I'll put that link in the description box. So today I'm just going to be sharing some of my crafting projects. And the reason that I was interested in this tool is because it leaves you with some different pieces of the aluminum can than you would have if you just used a knife or scissors to cut up the aluminum for a project. So let's get started with today's projects using the draft top, or should we call it craft top tool. So this first project is a very simple project. It can be used for, you know, hiding your valuables or uh, sort of a funny gag gift wrapping. But all I did for this particular project was to take the top and around the edge here, I added some uh, Aileen's Tack It Over and Over glue. And what this glue does is it's sort of um, sticky, so it doesn't have a super strong hold, but you can put the two pieces back together and it will, you know, it's not a super tight seal, but it, you can tell that it is holding. Um, and that way you can put the lid back on and take it off to use it for, like I said, you know, hiding things in or to use it for some sort of silly gift wrapping. This next project I'm calling a little sun catcher, I guess. And for that, for this project, I'm gonna use the ring of the can and the uh, sides of the can. So I'm just gonna cut off the bottom and then use that part of the can to shape into my sort of swirly shapes and then for the center, I just added some fused glass that I fused in my microwave kiln and used some recycled glass to make this little inside uh, part for the sun catcher. For the first step, I'm gonna be using a small cutting mat, a metal ruler. I've got an X-Acto knife, a pair of scissors, and some painter's tape. So I just need some four inch quarter uh, four inch long and quarter inch wide strips of packing tape. So I'm going to measure out about five inches worth. And then I just want to lay the tape on my cutting mat lined up with the horizontal line. The ends of the tape don't really matter. So I'm going to use three pieces of tape here because I need quite a few quarter inch strips. And I just want to make sure each piece is lined up with my horizontal lines. Oops. And then once I have my tape pieces on here, I can go ahead and use my metal ruler and line it up with the cutting mat itself so that I can cut quarter inch pieces of the painter's tape. So once my strips are cut, I'm ready to go ahead and put them on the can. And most cans have a seam that you can follow so that you can get your first piece nice and straight. So I'm just gonna take my first quarter inch piece and line it up 
hopefully you can see that little seam line. I'm just gonna line it up with that seam line. Stick it down. Now I'm gonna lay another one right next to it, but I'm not gonna stick the ends down. I wanna get it not overlapping, but right butted up against where my last piece left off. And then I'm gonna lay two more pieces. And I'm doing this so I can kind of hopscotch the strips of tape. So this one, I can go ahead and tack the ends down. And then I'm gonna lay another one and not tack the ends down, just so I can get a hold of it. And here's what I mean. So I'm gonna pull this one off. So I have, and I'm just gonna hopscotch it I guess that's what I'm calling it, hopscotching, over, laying it down. It's in a permanent position now. And I'm gonna take another piece. So I'm always kind of working with four strips together. And then I'll pull this one off. That way I'm not using the same piece, I'm not pulling the same piece off every time and that way I can kind of hook it down permanently. Then I'm gonna get a fourth piece, so I always have that fourth one there. Anyway, there's probably a lot of different ways to mark the can, but basically all I'm doing here is I'm just trying to mark my can in even straight strips that are a quarter inch wide. So you can do that any way you want to. If you wanted to use a marker or something, you could probably do that, but this just seemed like the easiest way to do it to me. Once you have all the tape pieces on, you should have some pretty even uh, strips all the way around, even when you get to the end. They don't have to be perfect, but you want them to be pretty uniform. So now that I have the tape on there, I'm gonna go ahead and use my paring knife just to cut the bottom off carefully. And then I'll use my scissors just to clean up the, the edge a little bit. So then uh, now I'm ready to cut along this tight tape strips and I'm gonna go ahead and cut on both sides of the tape all the way up to my little metal rim here. So once I've got it all cut, I'm going to go back and just pull off my pack or my painter's tape on all my pieces here. And then I'm going to alternate every other one and just bend it out. I'm going to bend one out and skip one, bend one out all the way around. So this part is a little bit tricky. The pieces that I folded out, I'm gonna go ahead and use my needle nose pliers and what I wanna do is twist them so that they are going this way instead of flat like this. But I wanna be careful not to tear the uh, aluminum and pull the piece off. So I'm gonna kinda of angle my pliers here and just sort of bend the piece up and flatten it out because I want it to be perpendicular to the ring now. I don't want it to be over here. I want it to be pointing this way and have the flat edge be going up and down. Hopefully that's making sense. So I'm just going to carefully turn all of my pieces 
and straighten them up. So I've started rolling the edge here of the can and I'm using some jewelry pliers to roll this up. And there's a little bit of a trick to it just in that you need to figure out how tightly you want to roll your uh, roll ups. And you don't want to hold them super tight. You can see I'm letting it go a little bit here. Basically when you're done rolling you want the size of your curl to be a little bit smaller than you want it to end up. So that when you let it go, see I made that one a little bit bigger than it should have been, but I might be able to tighten it up. Let's try it again here. You just want them to be kind of uniform. And I want them to be touching all the way around like these are here. So they're touching each other and then they've got this other piece on the inside of them. So let's see if I can do a better job on this one. The aluminum is fairly forgiving. Uh, you don't want to bend too much on the end here, you'll break them off, but you can re-roll it and tighten it up and loosen it up at least once if you don't have it tight enough or you have it too tight. And this first row I am rolling all the way to the edge of this ring. So like I said, I want my roll to be a little smaller than I want it to end up. And then when I let go of it, hopefully I end up with a fairly uniform curl on all of my pieces. So I'm gonna finish this first row, curling all of my pieces up to the rim of this can. I've made it around my first ring here, so now I'm going to go back to my other strips here and I just need to make sure that I'm folding them toward in between where they go. So I'm going to pull them between the pieces to flatten them out, just like I did before, kind of just make sure you're getting them in the right spot. Like I almost put that on the wrong side there. All right. And now I want to go ahead and just kind of twist these back so that they're, when they roll up, they're going to go the same they're not going to roll this toward they're not going to roll this way they're going to roll this way not sure that made any sense but i just want to make sure i've got the bends to straighten them out so that they actually kind of fit between the pieces instead of sticking off like this hopefully you can see what i'm doing here just kind of carefully trying to fold the piece. Kind of shore everything up here. And now I'm ready to do my second row of curls and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, only I'm just not gonna curl them all the way to the uh, rim, I'm just going to curl them all the way to the first curl, or the top of the first curl. So I've finished curling up all of my pieces here. And you could leave it like this if you wanted to and just hang it like this, but I've decided I'm gonna put something in the center. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I wanted to back up real quickly just because I wasn't sure if I made this part very clear, but the trick to not breaking these pieces off of the rim 
is that you're not really twisting them, you're folding them. So you're making two folds in order to switch their direction and also make them straight or perpendicular against the ring itself. And they don't have to be perfect, but you can see I've got a fold here and then I'm folding it back in order to switch the direction of this piece of metal right here. So you can even actually do it with your fingers if you want to. The needle nose pliers are helpful when you have some curls and it's a little harder to reach in there. But like I said, you're just gonna, you're not so much twisting as trying to make two folds so that you got one fold up and one fold to change the direction of the piece itself. So as I mentioned, you could just leave this sun catcher the way it is. It's kind of hard to see in this lighting, but when you kind of hang it in front of a window, it just has some really pretty, uh, I don't know, I think it's just really pretty and sort of delicate looking. I don't know if it's because of the blue of the Pepsi can or if it's the silver or if it's just kind of the combination of them, but it does look really delicate and pretty in the right light. Uh, and like I said, you could just leave it like this, but I am going to put some something in the center. Um, you could use some different beads if you wanted to. The options are kind of limitless. Uh, I have a seashell. I don't know if I'd like that, but you could use something like that. These are just some Dollar Tree glass uh, stones or beads that you could use. I also made some bottle cap beads a while back that I thought about using just to keep the whole soda and beverage theme going. But I think what I'm going to do is use some pieces of bottle glass and I'm going to fuse them like I did on this first one. So I have a little microwave kiln that allows you to fuse glass pieces in your microwave. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I'll quickly show you what it looks like here. So it's a very simple shape. This is the base and then you have some, uh, I've forgotten what it is, kiln paper underneath your glass. And you can see I just have some very rough pieces of glass cut here, kind of shaped into a five-sided shape here. And they're just stacked together. Now I'm gonna mess it up here, but they're just little rough pieces of glass that I've cut. I'm terrible at cutting glass, but, and then I've just sort of built them into this shape and then the kiln has a little top part that sets on top and you put the kiln in your microwave for about three minutes and it fuses your glass so that you end up with a shape more like this one. Hopefully you can see that, this shape in here. So I'm going to make a few more pieces like that. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail like I said about the kiln. If you're interested in the kiln itself, I did a review. I did a lot of other videos on jewelry making in this kiln. So I'm just going to jump ahead and I'll be back when I have these pieces fused. So my kiln has been cooling off for about an hour now. You do have to let it cool down before you can open it up and look at the fusing. but. You can see that my glass pieces have all melted together in sort of a strange roundish shape. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of jewelry wire to wire it up kind of like I did this one to put in the center of my second sun catcher and that will complete my sun catcher. For my last project, I'm going to be using just this ring again, and I chose this can because you can see that the, the ring here is gold, and, and most of them are silver, but this one is gold, so I've decided to steal this little ring of gold here. So I'm just going to carefully cut using my paring knife all the way around until I get this piece cut off. use my scissors at the end here. It's 
So this is the part I'm going to be working with. So I'm going to use a good sharp pair of scissors to cut off the excess can here and then if you have a little uh, tile sanding block or something you can use it to file down if you have any really rough edges. And for the final step, I'm going to use some needle nose pliers and a jump ring and an earring hook to make a big hoop earring. And it's just as simple as that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my first three projects using the draft top tool. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, and I hope to see you back here soon in the lab.